communication and you've got that desire, anything is possible. So my dream was to become a champion, that was my dream. And we, I believe we can all become champions in our own lives. Whatever you choose to do, you can be a champion. Are you a victim of change? Do you defend against change? Do you embrace change? So who are you? Change is going to happen and it's who you're going to be in the face of change. Has fear ever stopped you in your lives? It's a big thing, isn't it? It's, it's there in front of our faces all the time, fear. So I believe there's a moral victory to be taken from our defeats, our upsets, our mistakes, our failings, our weaknesses, our insecurities. If you're willing, there's something of value to be taken from all those things that happen to us. I got into boxing as a young kid of eight years old. My dad took me down to the gym. My dad used to be a, an amateur boxer. He boxed for England, he boxed for Ireland. He was a national Irish featherweight champion. So it was in the blood, and he took me down to the gym when I was eight years old. But what actually happened three years prior to that, when I really became a fighter, was in, I've got two older sisters. So what are all those people watching, if you've got any brothers or sisters, you'll, you might be able to relate to this. I've got two older sisters, Mandy and Lisa. I'm a little skinny five-year-old kid. We're ro rolling around my mum and dad's front room, and they got me pinned to the floor. And I'm kicking and screaming and fighting. I couldn't fight them off. So I was a little five-year-old kid. I thought I was dying. And I used to get so upset, I used to hyperventilate and go blue. I was kicking and screaming. I couldn't fight them off. So in that moment, I decided that no one was ever, ever going to beat me, dominate me, hurt me, or get on top of me ever again. So boxing for me was my outlet to prove that I wasn't weak. And that went right throughout my career, because I never knew this at the time. But I used to go in the ring prepared to die. Boxing for me was like, kill or be killed, life or death. That was my experience. So that all come from when I was a five-year-old kid. That's how they got created. From a kid of eight years old, I, I was trained to fight every day. My whole life was about being Billy the Boxer. I lived, I, I even used to dream about boxing. It was my whole existence. Every pore of my being was about being a fighter, about winning about being a champion. That killer instinct come from then, because that decision, I was, I was so upset at that time, I thought I was dying. My sister was, I was so hyperventilated, I used to get so upset that I thought I was dying, so I would have done anything to fight my way out of that situation. On a day-to-day -day basis leading up to a fight would be really extreme. I was to wake up in the morning, have a certain type of breakfast, because I was trying to reduce my, my weight all the time. So I'd be mentally focusing myself, I'd get my kit bag made up, I'd wrap my bandages up. So each training session was like going, getting ready for a fight. And every day, every day, every day, that's what it was like, every day, non-stop, non-stop. I think it's your desire. I mean, when I put myself back in, when I was training, it was that desire. I went in the ring prepared to die. That was my commitment. I, I was so committed to it. I was just went in the ring. When the first bell went, that was it. I went to work and I never knew I was going to come out or not. I did. My mental strategy was preparation. To become a champion, I think, is having that consistency, consistently having effort over time, the discipline and dedication. To win this belt, I had my first fight when I was 11 years old, and I won that when I was 31. So that was two decades later, so 20 years. And I failed three times before I won it. So it's persistence, courage, determination, never giving up. I was never say die. I was, I was going to get that belt. But self-doubt self did creep in a little bit. I had to deal with the internal conversation. Am I good enough? Am I ever going to win this thing? But I really had that self-belief. And I just would never say die, never give up. The overcoming was living into the future of being a champion. But that's what had me get out of bed in the morning. I used to run in the rain, the sleet, the snow, Christmas Day, no Christmas pudding. I would have done anything just to get to that desire. It was just that future that I was living into. Yeah. Definitely, that my 3D methodology, or I call it mental boxing. Because mental boxing, our opponent is us. So that the biggest challenge is to overcome ourselves. I think the process to become a champion, I think it's innate. I think we all have the ability. I think we all know what we really want or whether, we're, whether, we're, whether it's capable. I think it's all within us. And it's just having the, the tools, the methodology, just the, the mindset to really get what you want. If I never went training, then that was going to come and bite me in the fight. And for me, if I wasn't prepared, I was going to get killed. I had a friend of mine killed in the ring. Uh, I know four or five guys have been brain damaged. I've been in hospital myself, so I, I was fully aware of how dangerous the, the sport is. 
but I chose to do it and I love it. But it, for me to miss a training session was like a was like like a death sentence. Because if I if I never arrived on fight night in 100% best condition, then I'd only have myself to blame. And the ultimate sacrifice could be with my life. That's how that's how I used to view it. That's how real it was for me, and that's what had me get up and go run in the rain, sleet and snow, day after day after day, month after month. No, I really believe it's intuitive, it's, it's an instinct, and I still have that now. It's like you get to really read people, because I was trained from a kid of eight years old, and I was constantly looking and working with other people in the ring, in that circumstance, and, you, and you're, you're reading it before they throw a punch. When, if you're really in tune, as they throw a punch, you can react, so you're automatically intuitive automatically intuitively reacting to their movement so i'd be able to move if you if you moved a certain way to me i, I would react and i'll be looking to be able to counter you just instinct it's like that it's that quick so my mind's taking all in the information as you move around the ring like ballet it's like a dance but the outcome's slightly different <laughs> it can be a painful outcome and the intention's slightly different but the intention is to win the fight I and mean, it's not it's not to cause too much damage but it's Damage, damage is going to be done. It's an occupational hazard. That's why I ended up looking like that. It's just one of the things that happened. That's what, I think that's what makes it so appealing to people. So people are so intrigued about what has somebody to be a professional fighter. Because it is extraordinary. Boxing fight, you could compare it to like a business deal. You have an opponent. You prepare yourself. It's just all preparation, focus, driving, having an intention. You go into a business meeting or a phone call even, and it's just like having an intention for that phone call, that meeting. It's just making it happen and just being clear in your mind, being present and being clear and having an intention for your business deal, your phone call, your boxing match. So you arrive in the best possible shape you can to go and close the deal. And that's what it's all about. And it's the same thing for a fight. You'd have your team, you'd, you'd work and you'd be ready. And when the first bell goes, you go to work. All the meetings you've been in, if you think about it, how many meetings have we been in where there's just no intention? You come out of the meeting thinking, what was that meeting about? What was that about? Then you have a meeting about just have another meeting. It's just like there's no intention, there's no clarity, there's no, there's no, it's just a waste of time. I think we're all wasting so much time. But if we could arrive at the meetings and just have an intention, have an agenda, and just fulfill, and f fulfill it. And I think in life, a lot of us are walking around with no intention. We have no desire. We're not really sure what we want to do. And we, we're clambering around trying to, we go to work, we're not really happy, we're not really fulfilled. We're just going to work, clocking in, doing our day's job, but then we complain about it and moan about it. And, but then we justify it and then get upset about it. And then we take, uh, take that luggage home with us and complain to our partners about it. It's just, come on, wake up, get real, this is your life, get out there and make it happen. And it's just having a clear intention to get present to it. Just getting focused, clear and present, being intentional and just make things happen. Dreams do come true. I achieve my dream. Anything's possible. Really it is. Anything's possible if you have that desire. I visualise everything. So before a fight, I would visualise arriving at the venue. I'd visualise the venue. I'd visualise the changing room. I'd visualise every minute detail of that fight. And I would, the fight would take place and I'd, I'd run it. I'd have about a thousand different endings to the fight and I'd win every one. And the outcome would be, I'd win, but there'd be the different endings. But I used to visualise the walk, the ring walk, arriving at the ringside, getting into the ropes, the fight, the crowd. I used to just really visualise every minute detail. Then the fight would take place, I'd win the fight. I even used to visualise the after fight interview. Then I'd visualise leaving the arena. And that's what I do with my life now. I'm constantly visualising an intention.